think uh, it'd be appropriate. I think it'd be appropriate to begin today's services by reminding everybody there is power in the blood. Amen. Power in the blood of Jesus. And we are delighted by his grace and by his strength that so many people have signed up to give blood today in, uh, in the honor and in support of Adley Sanders and her family. So we have two congregations, one gathering here in this sanctuary this morning and one over there giving blood in the fellowship hall. And we want to say welcome to both of you. They tell me they can hear us over there. So that's a blessing too. There's Brother Jason. You want to come up here and take it, Brother? Come on up here. I I'll tell you what. I'm sorry. You're not going to pass out on us or anything. He just gave blood, all right? I want to shake your hand. Let me make just a quick announcement or two, and I'll turn it over to Brother Jason for the youth announcements. But we do have a regular business meeting tonight. You can see all the recommendations in the bulletin. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the flowers today. Uh, you see the upcoming blessing of the hunt November the 2nd. It's time to adopt a senior adult, and uh, the bylaws committee has made an announcement there. And don't forget about the upcoming wedding, October 21st. Brother Jason, tell them what they're going to be doing at the uh, at the uh, state fair today. So uh, I had Dr. Pepper and Nutty Buddy Bar, so we're good. We're not going to pass out. Uh, so uh, let me start with this. The, we're going to have a lunch fundraiser after church next Sunday. We have tickets, and all we're asking you to do today is just get a ticket and tell us how many you're going you're gonna to get, okay? You'll pay uh, next Sunday when you come and pick up your plate. That way it just kind of keeps down, you know, confusion and who's paid and who hadn't paid and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, if you want a ticket, just see us. We've got plenty of them. Uh, it's going towards uh, youth, uh, uh, youth Fund, uh, and that will help with trips and other things that we do throughout the year. Also today, we are taking the youth group uh, right after church to the Mississippi State Fair. We're going to be doing or working, I should say, the evangelism tent. So we're going to have the opportunity today to tell people about Jesus Christ. A lot of the youth, this is going to be uh, kind of their first time to do something like this. So be praying for us as we go and as we do that, because uh, it is kind of a fearful thing uh, to go and share people, share Jesus with somebody, especially people you have never met before or anything like that. So be praying for us, uh, and then we'll we'll attend a concert uh, later on this evening. So any other announcements? might need to bring up choir 4 30 uh you're practicing children's program getting ready for christmas so uh, if you can be here for that i'm pretty sure they would appreciate that anything else i don't know something you got something good brother and there you Sunday school this morning i don't know if this includes those who are giving blood but it's 110 today and the giving during sunday school was 1451 dollars so god bless you thank you for that Let's worship the Lord Jesus Christ together this morning. Amen. Brother Brown. Y'all think they're going to have a good time today. Boy, the senior, seniors of this church had a great time watching this man pretend to be Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash at the same time. And, uh, and he, he certainly did fall into a burning ring of fire for sure. If you, you get on Facebook and you'll see it all. That old, that old mean Facebook. 518, though, they're talking about blood. The life stream of your body is the blood. My life is in you, Lord. Let's stand as we sing.
473, please, 473. which is we all need a friend to walk with us along life's way. Amen. I don't know what path you may be walking today, but God's plan is not for you to walk it alone. God's plan is for you to walk with a friend, with family, and at the, the at church of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have family, we have friends, we have neighbors, and we have truly a, a family of one blood. It is the blood of Jesus that brings us together. Amen. And as we give today, we're giving blood in, in, in the support of Adley Sanders. We want to continue to remember her. We also have loved ones and friends who are walking a, a valley right now. The Varner family, we remember them. And, and we're so glad to have Miss Karen back today. And we walk with you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We want you to know you're never walking alone. And that song just reminded us, Jesus walks with us every step of the way. And we get the privilege of walking along the difficult paths of life and also the good times, but when the sun is not shining, we get to walk together hand in hand with Jesus. Amen. Let's pray together and let's ask the Lord to be uh, with each one of us as we walk life's path. God, we ask you to walk with us. We thank you, God, that you promise in your word that no matter what happens and no matter what paths, twists and turns may take in our lives, you walk with us every step of the way. You said you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. And God, we thank you that that is true. And it is evidenced by the, the Holy Spirit, Lord, that your presence with us to give us the strength to get up today and to take another step. And Lord, we're praying for, and we pray this blood donation today will be a great blessing for Adley Sanders and for all the children who are out there walking a difficult path, Lord, of sickness, we pray, Lord, that the blood will go to people who are in desperate need, who, who need hope and who need 
a new opportunity to live. And God, we thank you that you're already planning the, the people, the children, the maybe some senior citizens who are going to need this blood. Lord, we pray that you would bless it and direct it exactly where it needs to go. I want to thank you, Lord, for the giving spirit of this church that gives so much in so many different ways of time and also treasure and also talent. And God, I pray you'll bless today's services in a special way. Help us to be reminded that even as we face bitter, difficult circumstances in life, and all of us do, you walk with us and you send special people into our lives to walk along with us. And Lord, for that reason, I want to thank you for this church, the friends who are here, those who join arm in arm and walk together with us through the difficult paths of life. And Lord, we thank you that you're taking us to a destination. You're going to bring us all the way home to heaven where we'll have the greatest homecoming, the greatest reunion ever known. Around your table, Lord, bless the services today. Strengthen your people. Thank you for our visitors, God. May all your people be blessed today. And if there's anyone here who doesn't know you, Lord, would you bring them home to save them today? In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. song today really relates to our message today this uh this man that we're fixing that, that wrote this song horatio stalford lost his whole family in a, in a in an ocean accident he was not there but he sent his family on ahead and they were uh the the ship sunk and they all drowned and then he wrote this song and uh naomi and oprah and ruth all of not oprah orpah and Ruth, all of them experienced the same thing, but God brought them through. God has, a, God has a way and can fix things when there is no way. So we're going to sing it as well with my soul after all that. We'll sing the first, second, and third stanzas, please. Sing with us. When peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Yeah. 
mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have been in the goodness of God and all my Life is hard, but God is good. Amen. Thank you, Heather, for that powerful message and song. And all these songs that we have sung that have gone right together with the message that God has laid on my heart today from the book of Ruth. Ruth is where we will be today as we wrap up uh, this short series on uh, a few heroes of the faith. These were men and women just like you and me 
who have faced difficult times. And if we live long enough, if we have long enough life on this earth, we're going to face the same types of things that the people before us have faced. I felt led to preach this series of these three messages on Job and Joseph and now today on Ruth and Naomi because I see in this congregation and really all around us people who are going through difficult times and God does not abandon us in the difficult times. It is in those times that he makes his presence so known to us through his spirit and through his people and it must have been God's will because I've heard from so many people who these messages have spoke to. I pray today God's going to speak to you through the story, the true story, the record of Ruth and Naomi. Our text is Ruth chapter 4, verse 13 through 17. This is at the end of their story. We're going to back up in just a few moments and go from the beginning all the way through the end. But at the end of their story, a long, difficult journey, here is how it wound up. Ruth 4, 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. The women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. May he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. And the neighbor women gave him a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David, who you know is King David. And of course, the line of the Lord Jesus Christ came through David. God has a way of working through our difficult times and our difficult circumstances and through our pain and loss and tragedy. The loss that we experience as a natural course of life when a loved one dies or when we ourselves get sick and we face death or the, the loss that comes like in the life of Joseph when people were attacking him and using all manner of evil against him to try to destroy his life. God is still at work. And he has the power to work through and to work above the circumstances and to bring it all to a, a good end for his people. Can I get amen right there? That text that we'll look at as we close today, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things work together. He said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. We may not see his purpose in what we're going through today. But rest assured, friend, God has a purpose. And God had a purpose in the life of Ruth and Naomi. This is a story of a family that suffered great loss and great tragedy. And before we go any further, I want to ask you to bow with me and let's pray and ask God to speak. Lord, we thank you that you work through our circumstances and you walk with us along the path of life. And today, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to everyone who is within the sound of my voice those who are here in this congregation, those who are next door giving blood in, uh, for the Adley Sanders benefit. We pray your blessing on all of these. And those who are going to watch this on a video, Lord, later this week, we pray, God, that you would speak to each one of us right where we are, right where we're going through. And Lord, remind us that you have a good plan in mind and you are walking with us and you never leave us, you never forsake us. So, Lord, speak to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the story of a family, a family like yours and like mine. It was a little family. If you go back to Ruth chapter 1, there was a man by the name of Elimelech. He had a wife whose name was Naomi. Now, the name Naomi has a meaning, and the Hebrew people named their children so that the names had real meaning. And I hope that you do that as you have the occasion to do that with your children. Naomi's name meant pleasant. So when we Talk about Naomi, remember that. Naomi means pleasant. And we all pray for and we hope for a pleasant life, don't we? But we don't always get that pleasantness every single day that we live. Naomi and Elimelech were, were uh, citizens of the city you may have heard of named Bethlehem. Do you know what the word Bethlehem means? It means house of bread. 
So it was a place of abundance. It was a place of food and, and actually rye and, and barley and grain and wheat that were grown there. And even to this day, it's a very fertile part of the country of Israel. This family that lived in the time of the judges. So that is why Ruth is coming into the book of uh, Ruth right after the time of the judges, right after the book of the judges. And it is a time when people were seeking God and they were trusting God as you and I do today. Now something happened to the family. This was uh, Limelech and Naomi, and they had two sons. Something happened beyond their control. A famine hit the land, it says in Ruth chapter 1, uh, verse, verse uh, 1. It came to pass in the days of when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And that's the family. So a famine came. What happens? We've kind of experienced that this year. The Lord decided to stop sending rain, and the rain has not come. And we prayed for rain. He sent a little rain. Praise the Lord. How many of you got rain this week? Give God the glory for that. Amen. We're still praying for rain. But a famine came because the earth dried up, and it wouldn't produce the grain at the house of bread that uh, would normally be coming in in Bethlehem. So these folks had to make a decision. They made a decision that a lot of people have to make when hard times hit. They had to relocate for a while. They moved to the neighboring country of Moab. Moab right across the Jordan River, <clears throat> and they went over there for, the Bible says, 10 years where they made their home in Moab. And as they were there, God blessed them, and they survived. The two sons... Malon and Chilion married two women from Moab. Their names were, as Brother Donald said, Ruth and not Oprah, Orpah. <laughs> he called himself. But it's so easy to look at that. It looks like Oprah. But Ruth and Orpah were the wives of these two young men. And they lived there for 10 years. What happened was a tragedy came as Elimelech passed away. And Naomi was left as a widow, but she had her two sons and her two daughters-in-law. And in the culture of that day, there was no safety net. There was no uh, social security, if you will. They had no one to fall back on except their family. And it's always a good idea to have family to fall back on. So when a husband passed away, the, the sons took up the responsibility to care for their mother, which I'm sure they did. But something else happened, unexpected. Uh, a disease, perhaps, or maybe some other event happened and both of her sons, Malon and Chilion, passed away, which left Naomi now with no husband, no sons to care for her, and two daughters-in-law that had no way to provide for themselves either. What a difficult patch to be in. You know, I bet I know people in this congregation. I think I probably know some who've been through situations just like this. Maybe not quite as d distraught as this situation, but distraught nonetheless, difficult nonetheless. And you know people like that too. And when we're going through a rough time, it's easy to lose sight of the blessings that God has around us. And that's what happened to Naomi. Naomi began to become bitter and angry. And that anger was coming out of fear because, let's face it, she was looking at a life ahead of her with no way to provide for herself, no way to meet her basic needs. And so... She began to feel bitter. Later on, we'll learn that uh, she returned back to her homeland. She actually says in verse 20, as she comes back into Bethlehem 10 years later, they all said, look, Naomi has come back. The pleasant Naomi has come back. And she said to them in verse 20, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, which means bitter. Because she said, the Lord, the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. We can fall into that pattern of thought. We can fall into that hopelessness, that sense of despair, but I want you to know today the message of today is a message of hope. It's a message of encouragement because God didn't stop working for Naomi where she was. Even though she felt that way, God still loved her. God was still working through her life, and God had a good purpose and a good plan in mind. Well, as she began to look back <clears throat> the word had come back that uh, the, the famine was over in Bethlehem. So 
Naomi decided she would return back home. Now, they had sold their piece of property. It had been bought or used by some other family member, apparently. So she didn't have a home to go back to, so to speak. But she was going back home to her hometown. And uh, she told her two daughter-in-laws as she departed, y'all stay here, I'm going back. But you know, one of those daughter-in-laws would not let her go back alone. And that daughter-in-law's name was Ruth. She was not a Hebrew. She was not an Israelite. She is a Moabite, a foreigner. And so she was a person who, though, had become attached in love as a daughter-in-law to Naomi. She understood exactly how Naomi felt to lose her husband. And she said in verse, chapter 1 of verse 16 and 17, these words, which is a beautiful poem. And if you ever feel alone, if you ever feel lonely, you get this poem out and you think about the friends in your life and the family in your life and your church family who will not leave you alone. Because Ruth said, don't ask me to leave you or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. And where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and also more. If anything but death parts you and me. The blessing of friendship. That's point number one. In Naomi's life, God did not leave her alone. God left her with a great friend by the name of Ruth. A friend of a daughter-in-law. A friend who said, no matter what happens to you, no matter where you go, I'm going there with you. I'm going to walk this valley with you. I'm going to Bethlehem with you, and I'm not going to leave you, and your God will be my God, and your people will be my people. I will leave my homeland, Ruth said, and I will come where you are because God wants me to be with you. How many of you have a friend like that today? If you do, raise your hand. Praise God. You have a friend like that, a family member like that. If you don't, you need to find one because God has one for you. The church family is God's family. And that's why it's so important to be plugged into the local church. We find our closest friends outside of our family in church. And God brings the blessing of friendship even at a time like this. You know, God loves to use broken things to bring good things. God takes broken clouds and sends us rain. Amen. He takes broken soil and he grows grain. And then he takes the grain and it's crushed and broken and it makes the bread that we have to enjoy and to eat. And so as Naomi returned home in, in the book of Ruth, it says in verse 22, they returned home together and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Isn't that interesting? They left in a time of famine when everything had dried up, but they came back at a time of great harvest. So God is using broken things. He also uses broken people. People like Naomi who've been broken and bitter by her life circumstances, and yet God never did leave her, and God stayed with her. But Naomi couldn't see it at that point. As she arose to return home, she was very grieved, and she was ready to go alone. And she says down in verse, she says down in verse 13 of chapter 1, No, my daughters, as she was asking them to stay home, it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. So Naomi is grieving. She's hurting. And that is normal, and that is part of the process. When we suffer great loss like Naomi did, and yet God left her with good friends, a good friend in the person of Ruth who would not abandon her and who would not let her be alone. You know, loneliness, as God was creating the heavens and the earth, he looked out and he saw everything he'd made and he said everything was good. But loneliness was the first thing that God saw and he declared it not to be good. He said, to Adam, it's not good that man should be alone. And it's not good that you should be alone or I should be alone. God has designed a way for us to have community, to have family, to have friends. And it begins right here at church. It begins in our family. It begins in our homes. And so God created Eve for Adam. But if you and I live normal lives, there will come times when, we, when that relationship will be severed and we will find ourselves separated temporarily from our spouses. Not forever, but for a while if they know Jesus. Amen? And in that meanwhile, we need a friend. We need, a, we need someone who could come alongside of us, who can comfort us, who can be with us 
and not necessarily try to explain everything, but just to be present, to be with us. And that's who Ruth was for Naomi. Ruth was able to leave her own country, her own kindred, her own home, and to go to be with Naomi. You and I need the blessing of friendship in our lives. We need the blessing of companionship. We need the blessing of community. And if you're not plugged into a local church, you need to be plugged in to a local church. If you're not uh, involved on a regular basis with your church family, you need to be involved. And if you're here today and you don't have a church family, we want to invite you to be part of this church family, Corinth Baptist Church, a loving church. We will not let you walk through the difficult pain of life alone. Can I get amen right there at church? God is with us. He expects us to be friends to those in need, and he provides the friendship that we need in our greatest time. You and I need the blessing of friendship the same way Naomi did. Some of you here today are, you've lost a lot. You've lost a lot in your life. You've lost relationships. You've lost people. You've lost parents, spouses. Some of you here today have grown up as orphans. And you know what the Bible says? The best way that we can experience and to show God's love is to show God's love to widows and to orphans. And as we're entering a time of the holiday season and the bulletin today, this widow ministry, this senior ministry, to reach out to a senior citizen who, who may be feeling that sense of loneliness and despair, you, church, have a chance to reach out and love them the way Jesus would. Amen? So you sign up to adopt a senior as you enter this season. I encourage you to do that. There's a second thing. Uh, if you are suffering loneliness today, if you're experiencing that loneliness, you need to plug in. You need to be a part of your Sunday school class, a part of your discipleship class, your, your community of friends. You, you need to be with them. Naomi needed that in her life, and you and I need that in our lives. Don't let yourself get caught in, this, in the despair of loneliness. God has a friend for you. There's a second blessing in Naomi's life that I want to mention. In chapter 2, verse 11 through 13, actually 11 through 16, let's read it together. What happened is uh, Naomi and Ruth had come home. They came home to no land. They came home to no property, to no regular work. So they said, we're going to go find some work in the fields. They were coming home at barley harvest time, and they said there's a field that needs to be harvested. And Naomi perhaps was not able to go do the physical work, so she sent Ruth to do that for her. And in verse 11, uh, she finds that uh, she went, Ruth went to a field by the name of, uh, owned by the man by the name of Boaz. And Boaz saw her and recognized that she was not from here. And she went and talked to him, and she un he understood who she was. She was the girl, she was the young lady who had left her home to be with Naomi. And so he says in verse 11, it's been fully reported to me all you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you've left your father and your mother, the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given to you for the Lord under whose wings you have come to trust. She said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord. You've comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant. I'm not like one of your maidservants. A Boaz told her to come and eat. And then he told the young men privately in verse 15, let her green, uh, glean among the sheaves and don't reproach her and let grain fall by the handfuls on purpose for her that she may glean and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned and she was finding these handfuls of purpose that people had left behind because Boaz gave the blessing of kindness. We all need the blessing of kindness in our lives. God, God gives people in our lives and they may be ranked strangers like Boaz was to Ruth and to Naomi. He didn't know them personally, but he knew about them. He knew about their situation. And so Boaz showed the blessing of kindness to them. Naomi returns home from the famine. It's over. But the emptiness is still in her heart. And as she comes home, she tells everybody, don't call me pleasant anymore. Call me bitter because the Lord has dealt harshly with me. She felt empty. She felt alone. She had no land. She had no home. So she was dependent on others to find her sustenance. And God worked it out in such a way that they came to this field of Boaz. Chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 remind us of how that happened. 
Ruth the Moabite has said to Naomi, let me go to the field, glean hands of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, go my daughter. She left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz who was of the family of Elimelech. The Bible says she happened to come there, but I want you to know God was working through that situation. God had a plan for Naomi and for her life, and God had a plan for Ruth and for her life, and God made it happen so that they came to the right field, the right place, at the right time. And God had kindness upon her. And he used a man by the name of Boaz. He was a wealthy man. He was a well-known man. He was also a God-fearing man, and he had heard about Ruth's love and care for Naomi. And so he wanted to, of course, meet her and be a blessing to her. You know, kindness is something that you never can really give away. You may think you can. Give away, try giving away kindness. What you'll find is it will come back to you. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters, and in many days it will return unto you. As we cast the bread of kindness to people around us, you'll never regret doing it. You say, well, preacher, they don't deserve it. You know what? Aren't you glad God was kind to you when you didn't deserve it? You say, preacher, they don't look like our kind of people. Aren't you glad that God came to us when we were not his kind of people? We're entering the holiday season again. It is a time of great love and joy and happiness. But we don't want to keep it all for ourselves. Amen. We want to cast our bread on the waters. We want to show kindness to people in need. I'm so thankful for this church that's, that's took the initiative to have this blood drive today. First time I've ever been at a church that had a blood drive going on during the message, all right? Thank God for that. We're not here to sit and soak. We're here to give, and we're giving. And thank God for those of you who are giving blood for children and for people in need. Don't hold on to your kindness. I want to give you a test. If you had a dime for every kind word or deed that you did for someone, if you got a dime, you'd start keeping track if you got a dime every time you were kind to somebody. Amen? If you got 10 cents every time you were kind with a kind word or a kind deed. But if five cents was taken away for every unkind word or deed, I want to ask you the question, I want you to ask yourself, would you be rich or would you be poor today? You got a dime for every kind word and, a, and lost a nickel for every unkind word. Would you be poor or would you be rich today? God wants you and me to take kindness seriously. Kindness is the showing of favor, of mercy, and love to people who don't deserve it, who don't look like us. Ruth was a Moabitess, not even a Jew, and Boaz saw her need, and he had compassion. And he reached out and said, I want you boys to let some grain fall so they got something to eat at home. The blessing of kindness, even from strangers, is a blessing from God. Kindness is a language that even the deaf can hear and even the most unlearned can understand. Don't waste an opportunity to show kindness to somebody around you. Amen. If you're here today and you have a need and you don't know what where your answer is going to come from, would you tell someone at this church because we love you and this is a giving and a loving church. We have a way to give to support needs in this community, not only here in our church family, but outside the community, and we want to help you. So let someone know before you leave here today. Kindness, the blessing of kindness. There's a third blessing that God brought about, and it is the blessing of redemption. Chapter 3, verse 8 through 13. Now, what had happened is Ruth came back that evening and said, Ma, uh, Ma in law, or whatever she called her, she said, I found somebody who let me work in their field today, and I got some grain, and look, we got all this today. And Naomi said, Who is it? And she said, It's Boaz, a man by the name of Boaz. And Naomi reached back in her mind, and she remembered there was a relative to Elimelech named Boaz, the same man years ago. And Naomi knew something that probably Ruth did not know, that in the land of Israel, by God's own law, it was designed that any time a woman was left without uh, a husband, that the nearest of kin could come in and redeem the land to buy the land back and also take the responsibility for the family under their wing 
and so that the family would continue. What a wonderful thing. Isn't that a beautiful thing that God designed in the book of Deuteronomy? I won't turn there, but it's in Deuteronomy chapter 25 if you want to read about it. So Naomi begins to set up the ultimate matchmaking <laughs> situation. She says, Ruth, I want you to go down there. They're finishing up the harvest tonight, and they got a big pile of grain. She says, Ruth, I want you to go down there, and I want you to find Boaz and get down and on your knees and ask him if he would throw his, if, if he would throw a little bit of his coat over you to protect you. He'll know what you're talking about. And you can read all about it. It's almost scandalous in chapter 3. She goes in and lays down, and she does exactly what Naomi says, and says that the man was startled in the middle of the night and woke up and saw this woman laying down at his feet. Then he realized it was her. And then he realized that he had the privilege to grant redemption to this family. So he said to her, let's read together at uh, chapter 3, verse 8 through 13. Now it happened at midnight. The man was startled and turned himself, and there a woman was lying at his feet. Who are you? And she answered, I'm Ruth. Your maidservant, take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative. And he said, Blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, and that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. Now, my daughter, don't fear. I will do for you all that you request. And all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Now, it's true I'm a close relative, but there's a relative closer than I, so you stay this night and I'll talk to him tomorrow. If he'll do it, good. If not, I will perform the duty for you as the Lord lives. You lay down till morning. So Boaz sets about to find the, the next of kin because the, the law back in those days was you had to find the closest relative to stand in the gap, to redeem the land, to buy back what was lost. So he goes and has a meeting. Chapter 4, verse 9 through 17. You read the rest of the story and the end of this beautiful story. So he goes to these folks, and they, they want to buy the land, but they don't want the responsibility. They want the real estate. The other family members did, but they didn't want the responsibility of a wife in Ruth. So they told Boaz, you can buy it back. And he says to them in verse 9 of chapter 4, You are witnesses this day I bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malon's from the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Malon, I have acquired as my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brethren and from his position at the gate. You are all witnesses this day. And they all said, we are witnesses. You go on down to verse 13, and you read our text. So Boaz took Ruth. She became his wife. He went into her. The Lord gave her conception. She bore a son. The women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord. God got glory from this. Who has not left you this day without a close relative, and may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for the, your daughter-in-law who loves you, who's better to you than seven sons, is born him. So you know the rest of the story. Obed was born, the grandfather of David, King David. God has the blessing of redemption for you and for me. No matter what our story says, no matter what your story looks like today in chapter 1 or chapter 2 or chapter 3, the last chapter of your life story has not been written. God had redemption for Naomi in mind. God had redemption for Ruth in mind. And I want to tell you something. God had redemption for the whole world in mind because through David, Jesus would come through that line. Tonight, we're going to be looking at some of the unexpected characters in the family line of Jesus. You'll be surprised at some of the characters that found their way in the family line that brought forth Joseph and Mary, who would take care of baby Jesus. You'll be surprised about that, but don't make any mistake about this. God took broken people, broken lives, Naomi and Ruth, and God blessed them with the gift of friendship. And God blessed them with the gift of kindness. And God blessed them with the gift of redemption. And God bought back everything that was lost. And God put in motion a plan for a bright future. Not just for their family, but for the whole world. Because the greatest blessing of all is Jesus. Amen. And it's through the life of Naomi and Ruth and their story 
that the line of Jesus would come. Some of you here today, are you're facing a story that is very bitter. It's very painful. It's hurting. I want to encourage you to let other people be a friend to you. Let other people be kind to you. Let other people step in as God leads them and redeem what may be lost in your life. God has a plan. Most of us here today, God is speaking to us this way. We need to be that friend to somebody. We need to show that kindness to somebody. We need to let God show us what his will is so that we might be that great blessing in their life. Amen. It's my challenge to you today. For people going through hard times, need a friend. They need kindness. You adopt that senior. You, you visit this blood drive and give blood. Find someone in your Sunday school class who is hurting and you show friendship and kindness to them. And it will not be wasted because you can't give kindness away. It'll come back. We're talking about hurting people. We've been talking about people in hard times and through each of these stories, through Job's life, through Joseph's life, and through Ruth and Naomi's life, we see the providence of God, God's overarching purpose. He's working toward a bigger purpose and a bigger plan. If you visit a factory, if you visit a factory that makes up beautiful curtains, for example, most of those factories will have the fabric on top of a, a big giant uh, weave, weaver's beam. You can walk under there, you can see all these patterns, but they make no sense because you're looking from the bottom side. You're looking up, and all you can see is a tangled web of messy threads of different colors. But if you climb up above that beautiful tapestry, that curtain, you look down from above, you can see there is a beautiful pattern that the maker has in mind. Make no mistake about it, Naomi walked a bitter path. Ruth did too. They didn't understand it. They couldn't see it. And they died not understanding God's full plan, but from heaven. And now from the, from the benefit of God's word, we see that the maker had a beautiful plan in mind. The last chapter of your story has not been written. Don't leave this place hopeless. Don't leave this place in despair. God is above it all. The greatest blessing of all is to know Jesus who walks with us through every valley and every difficulty and every pain. The cross of Calvary proved that Jesus loves us enough to die for us. But aren't you glad he didn't stay dead? He's alive this morning. His Holy Spirit is here and he's speaking today. So whatever God is speaking to you, I want to ask you to listen. You come to this altar and you pray. You answer God's call in your life to be that friend, to show that kindness or to receive it. And you trust God. He's got a good plan in mind. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, God, for your spirit that's moving here today. Thank you for the generosity of the giving that's happening, even with the collecting of blood here at this church. Help us to be people of friendship and people of kindness and people who understand that you are the God of redemption, who buys back what was lost. You've got a good plan in mind. We thank you, Lord, that no matter what we go through, you walk with us and that we can trust you. So, Lord, bless your people today through your holy word. Bless this time of invitation, God. And may you get all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing hymn number 541, 541 stand and sing. God's speaking. You don't wait there. You come. Thank you. 